Blue. Hopefully we are live. This chair is so squeaky. Hi, Greg. How are you? Hello, everyone. We are live. Hi, Kirsty. Hey, guys. I know, I need some WD-40, it's so bad. Um, I need a brand new chair as well. Hey, Ben. Um, so tonight we are doing our interview with Dean Allsop. Um, what do we owe the pleasure? Well, we tonight we are doing the interview with Dean Allsop. So all things MetaZoo um, and just a bit more about Dean. So it should be, should be knowing Dean should be a good a good interview so we'll um an interesting conversation to put it um put it simply um we'll see when dean is actually going to arrive there oh the metazoo blur yeah actually ben he's a really good friend of ours um he's a really good friend of ours so it'll be really good for other people to um get to meet him and uh anyways he's, he's uh, requested to join right now so i'm going to accept him Hey possums. Hi BJ. Hi. Hey Ledge. How are you? I am absolutely shattered. I had the biggest three days up in Brisbane for work. Oh really? Yeah. And then my flight got delayed last night. I didn't get home till like fuck. It must have been like eleven o'clock. Oh yeah, because you've been in Queensland, haven't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what you been doing up there? Anything fun? <sighs> No, nah, just work stuff, which is fun, but it's not like MetaZoo related. It's all finance related. Yeah, it's not hobby related. It's boring stuff. It's what pays no. for the hobby. That's what it is. Did you uh, Did you get your hair did? I did. I just actually washed it. Ah. <laughs> 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 no. I might like that one. Um, but no, I just like straightened it. I, did, I got all I got all done up just for you, Dean. That's just just well, for you. I wish I could say the same. I can see these bags under my eyes because I've had like minimal sleep, but that's all right. Don't we crack talk to on. Me about bags. The last few weeks have been absolutely cr ridiculous, and I'm on leave as of now for nearly a month. So I'm off for a full like month up until like the 28th, I think it is. So I'm so happy about that. It'll be so, good just to. Chill this out. is for the is this for the puppies as well though, right? Yeah, so um Stevie had a an appointment today. Um everything's all good. Um they did an appoint um basically a check to see roughly how many puppies she's gonna have. So um yeah. they said about six. Um and she's actually booked in for um the C section on um Tuesday. So we're actually gonna be yeah. having puppies on Tuesday. Oh my god, that happened yeah. so quick. Dogs have it easy. That was like two months. Definitely. Um, so it's, eight, it's nine weeks altogether. So it literally is like two, just over two months. So yeah, very, um, yeah. very quick. Anyways, enough awesome. about the puppies. Tonight is <laughs> um, all about you. Uh, thanks for joining us. And um, actually, it was you that reached out. You said that you would like to do it. I did want to get you on board anyways and, um, you know, pick your brain about a couple of things. But um, thanks for doing that. We really appreciate it. And it's really good to, you know, get to know a little bit more about another TCG that's out there. And mm. so many people have so many questions about it as well. So it's good to have somebody who's knowledgeable on board to come and talk about it. So thanks. Well, yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for letting me come on board and, uh, and do it. Like, uh, like you said, there is a lot of questions. One, because it's new, but two, because, because it is new, there is so much happening and changing and things coming in and going out and, and everything changes almost on a daily basis. So if you're not aware of that, like there is so much stuff that, you know, you just, you're going to miss out on or you're not, it's not going to be covered or you're going to not going to understand 
you know, it's like the Kickstarter, right? The the second Kickstarter. I've been getting so many questions about that lately because five or six months ago when it actually released, all these people that are here now weren't here. So they're like, what is that? I don't know what that is. Yeah. So. And for somebody like myself who does love MetaZoo, um, even like, I don't know, I can't remember how long ago we actually started collecting it, but it's been a few months now. And even myself, like, I've got so many questions still as well. I think originally when we first started looking into um, to it was back when we got Christopher uh, Robinson on um, from Caster Society. And um, that's really when we started actually, like, um, you know, actually buying MetaZoo and opening the packs and stuff like that. So it's been a fair few months and even still I've got quite a lot of questions. So I'll be keen to um, keen to uh, ask, ask you them and get into it. But first of all, did you want to just like introduce yourself? So for the people that don't know who you are, like just like who you are, where you're from, a little bit about yourself. Like where I'm from, like where I live, what I do. Well, you're from or Melbourne. Bob. You just, let's just say <laughs> Melbourne. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I am. Um, uh, I'm not. Uh, I don't even really know how to talk about myself. To be fair, <laughs> like, look. I, I mean, I think the the main reason a lot of people um, in the collector space would know me anyway is purely just because of Metazoo. Yeah. I mean, I was there was a bit of um, a bit of Pokemon stuff, I guess, at, at one point or another, and I still love Pokemon, but. MetaZoo, I guess, for me, and uh, the way my brain works, I saw not just an opportunity, but something that I really, really actually enjoyed. I saw an opportunity to get involved in something that was new and I saw a lot of potential in. Um, and I still believe that heavily. I think it's... Uh, I'm just, sorry, I'm reading comments. I don't know, I don't know how to flip yeah, my is very thing around. Everybody's like, can you turn your thing around? I'm like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> but um but yeah look i i don't even know where we were um i'll i'll tell you where we were so your name is dean you come yeah. from melbourne yeah. um we originally connected when you were rayman so everybody <laughs> knew you as rayman you would go into yeah. everybody's streams and you'd be like any rays that would be literally your intro and uh -huh. you know you had probably one of the biggest uh, requiser collections that I like ever. But like, you would even see yourself like biggest requiser collections you've seen. I think you pretty much had all the cards, bearing a couple maybe that you needed. Um, yeah, I had them all but two, and two. then at that point, I had sort of intended to finish it because I'd started collecting medicine as well. I was collecting um, uh, all the rays as well, but the. I think the timing just sort of wasn't right. I was like, oh, I, I just, I put, I, I reached out to basically two people and said, oh, I'm going to sell this. Do you want to buy it? And one of them actually came back and gave me a, a decent offer. It was more than half of what I was asking for. And I was asking for market value. So, you know, I was pretty much uh, happy to sort of do it. So, but it, it's funny. I think I think um, you've got a point that we'll touch on on the the Rayman saga a little bit later. But it it came about to fill a need during COVID, and it did that for me. And I was happy to move it on. Like it wasn't, I wasn't emotionally attached. I don't get emotionally attached to many things, to be completely fair, yeah. except maybe my wife, in case she watches <laughs> this back. But that's about. Well, it. I would hope so. I would hope so. Um. So. I think you pretty much answered like the first question that we had in regards to um, you left. Um, uh, you've moved on from the raise, which is, you know, totally fine. It's good. You know, you've got an opportunity to sink into something brand new. And I think that's like pretty awesome. And it's also, you know, very, um, you know, courageous of you to leave something that has been well known for a, a long time. And, you know, a lot of us grew up with it and, um, you know, it's got a hold there in the market. You know, Pokemon is well known. Um, everybody, yeah. everybody knows Pokemon. So you've kind of like taken a risk a little bit in regarding to, uh, into actually getting into MetaZoo. But can it's you just tell us a little bit in regards to what is MetaZoo? 
Well, it's funny you say that because you said I took a risk and there's only like one saying I live by and that is risk is the price you pay for opportunity. So yeah. when you talk about like leaving Pokemon and going into MetaZoo, um, it, I guess it's like, imagine if you had an opportunity to in 1999 and you were in Japan, you're like, oh, check out this Pokemon thing. This is pretty cool. Like, and you just bought a shitload of it and then you just put it away and five, six years down the track, bang, it's like one of the biggest animes like in the world and then you fast forward now like 22 years later and it's an astronomical ip it's this company yeah. it's a brand it's got all this it's got everything like i invest in a lot of different things in different markets not the tcg market um and i guess for me initially i was super skeptical about metazoo it was brought to my attention for months before but I missed opportunities to get stuff um, before the real big hype train. I mean, now, now it's a little different because the hype has eased off, which is good, which means for everybody that's not into it yet or is getting into it, like it's literally the best possible time to be doing that. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, like, like I said, I, I, you know, it's a risk getting out of Pokemon Yes and no. Like I collect Pokemon for fun. I didn't collect it to make any money. I'm doing the same with MetaZoo. I'm not. I'm not making any money unless I go and win a tournament. Then I'll be making some money. But you know, it's not like I'm buying up bulk stock and holding it and waiting for it to absolutely sky. Yes, I have a collection of stuff that eventually someday will be worth a buttload, and maybe I'll sell it. Maybe I won't. But yeah, I think, I think, I think with for, any TCG, it's a long game, not a short game. If you're going to try and do it for, you know, get big books, really. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's what MetaZoo saw at the start. A lot of people jumped on it because the Kickstarter didn't even fulfill its pledge. Like, say, I, think, I can't remember the exact numbers, but let's say they wanted to raise 100 grand. They only raised, like, 40% of that. Right. Right, like with the Kickstarter. And then it, then they released the first edition. And when that got out into people's hands and people realized the mechanics of the actual game, it just mm -hmm. fucking skyrocketed. Like it blew up overnight. Like a, a first edition booster box. I remember Danny messaging me going, first day booster boxes are 300 bucks. Day later, 600 bucks. Mm -hmm. Day later, 900 bucks. Mm -hmm. Like a week after that, 15, 1600 bucks yeah. for these booster boxes. And we're just like, shit. We've, like, we've missed it, we've missed it, we've missed it. I remember the very first first edition booster box I ever bought, I think I paid like, I think I paid two and a half grand for two of them. And I was like, it was the happiest day of my life. I'm like, oh my God, I finally got one, I finally got one. Now you can probably pick them up if you've got people over in the States, like you can get them for around, you know, anywhere from, I think 750 is probably the cheapest. Yeah. Um, I still see some sell for about a thousand bucks because the first edition boxes were plagued uh, because of their packaging, it was horrible, like the way they shipped them. So a lot of the boxes are squashed or dented or have crooked corners right. or ripped in the seals. So it is hard to find, you know, real mint ones. Well, let's let's take it back then a second. So um, obviously when you go, like when you look at um, the, the actual um, sets, you've obviously got the first edition, but the bigger one above first edition is a Kickstarter booster box, which is where in the in the bottom right hand corner of the page of where it's got the, the you know the actual picture of the beastie or whatever it is. There's a little black box and it's got a green K, and that's how you tell the difference between it being a Kickstarter card and or just a normal first edition or second edition um, cryptid nation card, basically. Yeah. Um, what uh, what is the really the difference between Kickstarter and a first edition card? Is there any like difference? And, and why do you think that they created a Kickstarter booster box as well as a first edition box? So Kickstarter as a whole is basically, uh, it's basically crowdfunding to start a business. doesn't matter okay. what that is. If you're on a Kickstarter now, you can, you can back a book, you could back a fucking board game. You could back a TCG. You could back... There's all this different shit. I backed a, 
I backed a company that was making like these deck boxes for cards. Right. Like, you know, there's anything on there. That's what Kickstarter does. Like you can just take it there. And there was a couple of TCGs, MetaZoo being one of them that found a lot of success on there, which is why if you go on there now, you'll see a lot more. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, MetaZoo, so Mike basically created it and, and. Well, that was fun. Thanks for popping in, Dean. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Let's see if he hopes to um, reconnect. Uh, I was actually really interested in what he was saying then. So, um, <laughs> Come back, Dean. Come back. <laughs> right there. He's back now. <laughs> Good chat, guys. See you next week. <laughs> <sighs> I don't Whoops. know what happened there. My phone lately, when I'm watching something live for a long period of time, it'll just stop it. So that might happen more than once tonight. Let's hope it okay. doesn't. But if it Noted. does, I'll be... But, so um... what you were saying, you were saying, um, so Kickstarter is basically like, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kickstarter is basically a company where you can take things and people like crowdfund your ideas. Yeah, correct. Yeah, you basically, um, it's basically, it, Kickstarter itself is just a, just a website, just a forum where you can go and go, all right, this is what our idea, this is what we want to do, put it up and try and raise money for it. Okay. You obviously you outline everything about what your product is and, and all that. So Mike originally already had MetaZoo. Um, like it was already created. He'd already had a lot of prototypes and some really old prototype cards that we've seen glimpses of. There's this prototype Mothman that he gave Steve Aoki when he came on board, which is like really, really early. There's some drawings that don't even look like these MetaZoo cards. Like they look so different. So I think the MetaZoo is basically Mike's fourth wall sort of gameplay idea that he wanted to, to bring to life. That's, that's sort of where it started. And then after he's got some of the, you know, made some cards and stuff, like the sample cards, um, are ones that he basically had had made and hand packed them in his kitchen with his mum. He's like this story, yeah. and he sent them out and he sent them to all these content creators and stuff. And there's a video of some guy I don't know who he is, um, and he got sent a bunch of them and he found them about a year later and opened okay. them up. And he had seventy five thousand dollars worth of sample cards that wow. Mike had sent. But okay. so, so obviously that so, was the. Oh, no, go on. So that was the the progression. Um, and then I went to Kickstarter. It wasn't overly successful like a lot of TCGs aren't. Um, well, they weren't. But because of MetaZoo, now whenever a TCG goes on Kickstarter and everybody sort of has a look, everybody's backing everything to the fucking hills because they think it's going to be the next MetaZoo. And there's a saying in all TCGs when people are like, oh, what's going to be the next Pokemon? The next Pokemon is Pokemon. The next yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! is Yu-Gi-Oh! The next MetaZoo is MetaZoo. These are their own IPs. They're not the, the same shit. People are creating, you know, different things. So, um, but yeah, so it went on the, the Kickstarter. wasn't overly successful. Then first edition came out. Everybody got their hands on it. And then the hype train started and just blew up. It blew up. Yeah, awesome. So... I know that you've met Mike. So obviously what, like what Matt Christopher's just said in the um, comments, obviously, you know, Mike is the owner slash creator of MetaZoo. You've yeah. met him. Um, do, do you have an idea of like why you created MetaZoo and, um, you know, what his intentions were behind doing so? Uh, Mike's a really intelligent guy. He was, he's, uh, he's in finance uh, as well. And, he used to work in Wall Street, done a lot of trading. Like, he's a smart guy. Um, MetaZoo is, was basically, it's his passion project, right? It's something that he obviously played a lot of TCGs growing up, uh, came up with the, the idea of the fourth wall, which is what sets MetaZoo apart from, you know, these other games when we're talking purely on a, on a, on a gameplay basis. So, yeah, it was, you know, like... It was, it's not like he was living in his mum's kitchen. You know, that's just he's obviously got a good relationship with his mum. That's where he sent the cards from. It's not really a rags to riches sort of story for him. He's an intelligent guy. It's just something that um, 
you know, it was like his passion project that he's he wanted to make. He made it and it's succeeding. And then I guess that's ties into why, you know, all these people are like, oh, he's so involved, he's so involved, he's so involved. Like, yeah, I don't agree with, you know, him being involved in everything. But at the same time, when it is your passion project and it's not necessarily the main reason, you know, you're, you're trying to make money, like fucking, I, I can understand. Like he loves it. He, yeah. he, he, he's created MetaZoo and has continued to make MetaZoo because he loves it. And I think if you created something, you'd still want to protect it and, you know, you'd still want to be passionate about it and, you you know, you defend it if you can as well. So um, I think anybody, you, you if anybody was in his position, it would be the same. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. And mm-hmm. um, I really, uh, this is going to take, I just need to read this out because it's really bloody cool. And um, I think it's really interesting. Um, like, if anybody has ever gone into Google and done a quick search of what is MetaZoo, this is um, the description that you get. So it's the um, its workings are rooted in breaking the fourth wall or meta. This means that the environment you play in influences the strengths of the beasts and the spells. For example, if you play in rainy weather, your water beasts and spells will, ha- will have a power boost. Playing close to fire in the middle of winter makes your flame spells twice as powerful. In real life playing scenarios, what does that mean? So that is like, so I didn't even know that until I read these questions. And basically mm. from what I gather, Mike has actually created, um, you know, a game, a TCG game that basically brings in real life aspects as well. So, the, you know, the conditions that you're playing in, whether or not it's your birthday, that kind of thing. Um, so I just wanted to get a little bit more interested. I know that you obviously went to Texas, you know, you were part of the... Um, the collector con and the actual tournament there and um, what do the different environments and how does that affect you playing the game yeah um well like like we said this that exact statement is what metazoo is when people ask you know what is it that was its inception that was the reason why it was created then mike being american obviously you know cryptids and folklore over there is enormous on a whole nother scale to what it is here. Um, like I talked, I've spoken to Americans about certain cryptids that I didn't even know if they're actually real things. I'm like, yeah, no, no, that's like, like, that's like this monster that lives out in this bush out in my cousin's place in fucking Idaho or some shit. Like they, it's, you know, it, that's sort of that, what you said, the fourth wall gameplay is what started it all. That's, you know, he's uh, the inception of the idea. And then, um, and, and built off that. So it's the, the fourth wall aspect for me um, is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, in in Dallas, you know, there was a lot of people that had um, certain items, like the certain beasties, if you had the fishing rods within eyesight, like it gains an extra 20. Or if, yeah. there, if you could see a, a local tree or a local... Uh, sorry, a, tr- a tree out the window if there's clouds in the sky, like you get bonus points or it gains a certain trait, like, which is cool. I mean, the in competitive play, they basically will list the things that you can claim are on your fourth wall. And then there's a certain list of things that you can bring or wear because there's like, you know, if you're wearing MetaZoo stuff or, or MetaZoo um, uh, merch and things like that, then you can... You know, you get you get other certain points. Mm. Okay. How say, for instance, if you were brand new and you and you you are into playing TCG games, like mm. where can you learn to play? Right now, uh, I would I I always tell everybody the first thing you should do is jump into the MetaZoo Discord. That's it. And before MetaZoo, I didn't even know what Discord was. I'd never ever used it, and now I'm on heaps of Discord servers. But that's where you can find everything in in the one place. Yeah, that is the the best place to start. Uh, and then join our MetaZoo Discord as well. Um, the Facebook pages are great. Shops are starting to to have more learn to play events. There's a couple of partners 
that are, are trying to run events, which is good. They will pick up. I mean, you know, the, the, the more we can cater those events for people that give them the opportunity to come, then, then they will. Um, but yeah, for, for me, Matt and Danny, it was definitely the MetaZoo Discord server for us. Uh, from there, we jump on YouTube and the Meta Bros. They do a really good job. And then Caster Society. They were the one, they were the three things. They were the three things. MetaZoo Discord server, Caster Society's website, and Meta Bros on YouTube. That's the easiest way to give yourself a crash course in how to play the game, the game mechanics, and learn to understand it all. And then from there, obviously, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's plenty of other options. And I think as well, like Packers in the chat, I've seen Packer go in a way. We've been to, um, you know, Greensboro, um, the um, game shop there. You know, there's um, weekdays. He does regular catch-ups. I believe that, you know, Will Swain is in um, Queensland. There's people like all over Australia um, yeah. that really want to get MetaZoo out there and encourage people to play as well. Um, mm. And I think, you know, if anybody is in Australia and obviously I think the Discord and all them things that you've mentioned are awesome. Um, you know, I, I am a part of the MetaZoo Discord. Um, I do like, you know, getting in the sneak peeks of like, you know, the pack arts and stuff like that when they come out. Um, it is really See, that's, um, that's, cool. That's, that's only one part of it. There are so many other servers on there where you can play games with judges. You can discuss games. You can play games via um, like TTS. You can play games via cam like this. You just turn your cameras around and you play with your cards out in front of you. Like there's there's a lot you can do just on that on that one Discord server because I I do I I made the mistake when I first joined it and it's like oh yeah sweet this announcement section is great I'm seeing all this stuff you go through all these other servers that are listed on there there's heaps heaps yeah. and heaps and heaps of stuff that's cool um do you how did you uh, what's the next question um the next question is in here i know that we've talked briefly about caster society um mm. of, uh, i'll as far as i'm aware caster society and correct me if i'm wrong they're basically really heavily heavily invested in metazoo aren't they um they do a lot of promotional work for um, metazoo they release their own um promos i believe different um you know different stuff can you just um talk a bit more about your relationship with caster society and how um you know what their relationship is with metazoo in america well, Caster Society is, they're not like in a direct sort of marketing relationship or anything with MetaZoo. You know, they're, they're their own individual entity and company. Um, yeah. But their focus is obviously, you know, MetaZoo and its gameplay growth and the technology growth as well. Like I know Chris really well and he's, he's a tech guy. So when you see, you know, their live streams, you see their TTS tournaments, you see their app that they've created. And I know they're building blocks off that as well. Um, it's all about making, you know, some tech inroads for, you know, for MetaZoo. Same with like their website. It's basically a huge card database. That's what it is. You go on there and it's got, it's got all the cards. They, they work with the Meta Bros now uh, for, for video, uh, gameplay videos and footage and stuff like that. Um, you've got, what else have they got on there? They they run a lot of giveaways. I won a giveaway on there the other day, actually, uh, which was funny because I never do on their streams. Um, yeah, and, and they are pushing for a lot of in-person events. They do that too. They had a big yeah. release event for UFO. They run their extravaganzas three times, four times a year. They run their uh, TTS tournaments, which I think one is uh, one week in right now. Um, they do a lot sort of around gameplay, but they're, they're virtually, they are sort of very similar to, to, to what we are. It's just mm. different sort of entities, you know, and like we, as well. yeah, different countries, but we created a, a Facebook group. They created a discord server. So, you know, they're pushing members on their discord. They want to get to, to two and a half thousand and then they're going to do something crazy at bunny man bridge. Chris and Easton, which is pretty cool. Um, but, and then, yeah, you know, we're, we're just trying to sort of build a community. I mean, yeah, you can buy, sell and trade, but we sort of, the main reason we made it was to just keep getting what we know out there. 
like as much information as possible out there because uh, there's a ton of people that would be on the Facebook page that aren't in the Discord server or don't know about it. So there's all that stuff. Like Danny often will share stuff from the Discord on there so that they can see it. Yeah. Well, talking about then, how did you guys, um, did, when did you guys decided to decide to build MetaZoo Nation Australia? And, um, uh, you know, what, what made you do it, push you there? It was, uh, it was on New Year's Eve. I was out the, at the front at the beach with Mim and uh, I think I was just with Mim, my wife at the time. Uh, and I was part of another Facebook group that was a Pokemon collectible sort of related one. And um, I just sort of felt like I'd done what I needed to do there. I'd help them as much as I could sort of help them for the way I wanted sort of things to progress or go. So I basically just said, yeah, hey, thanks for having me, guys. It's been great. Um, I'm just going to step down uh, from, you know, from being an admin on your page. No hard feelings. Everything's all good. I've just, you know, i got my own shit that I want to focus on. So I did that first. And then I think maybe 20 minutes later, I messaged Matt and Danny and said, hey, but basically, I think I said to Danny, I'm like, I want to start a MetaZoo page because the one that we were on currently for MetaZoo wasn't giving us what we thought we needed and we knew was out there. So I just said, I want to start a MetaZoo page, but I'm not going to do it unless you two do it with me. And then Maddie straight away was like, hell yeah, let's do it. And then we're like, Danny, Danny, hello, 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 hello. Because Danny's <laughs> the one that got me and Matt into MetaZoo in the first place. Right, yeah. Um, and as soon as you wrote back and said yes, I was like, fucking bang, let's go. So um, Ben has sent a message, and before I forget, I do need to read it out. Benjamin has asked, what's the best way to buy MetaZoo stuff in Australia? The best way to buy would be with money. Um, I wouldn't recommend buying it any other way. Uh, <laughs> but when it comes to getting product... Uh, I would initially say Google it, you know, like that's what I do sometimes. People are like, oh, where can I get this kind of booster box? I'm like, all right, well, I know this shop's got it for this, this shop's got it for that, this shop's got it for that. You just punch it into Google and pop up and say, yeah, here you go. Like don't buy it from Gameology if anything you do because it's expensive. But but, um, but there's, there's a lot of shops that will stock it, shops that we work with. There's partners now. Um, it's it's an it's going to be an interesting sort of way to way to see how it goes because if they keep they have the partners that they've got they're sending product to the partners and they've got to sell it for certain pricing they keep going to the distro the distro gets it a different way and it costs them more money to actually bring it here than it might cost a partner so they have to mm -hmm. charge more for it too but it's no different it's no different to Pokemon you see that with Pokemon like. You pay if you're buying something from a brick and mortar store, you're going to pay more because they got more overhead. If you're buying something from an online store, you're going to pay less um, because they have less overhead. And usually, you play them off against each other, and you're going to get it for less again because they're all just trying to undercut each other. Which is something that we saw through COVID, with yeah. all these shops popping up. Um, but yeah, with MetaZoo, I would say. Again, depending what you want to buy. If you want to buy brand new stuff, you know, like booster boxes and that, your best shot is, you know, trying to get them from an online store or a partner. And then yeah. secondary market stuff, you're going to have to go, you know, eBay or, you know, the, our Facebook group along with some of the US Facebook groups. Um, but again, there's probably only one or two of those I'd recommend because um, some of them are absolutely horrible. And mm -hmm. you see scam posts and shit on there all the time because obviously some MetaZoo stuff is is quite yeah. valuable. But I've got a list of people that I would recommend personally. So if anybody watching Ben, you want to you want to know who I think you should buy it from or who I would buy it from, then I'm happy to sort of. I mean, we we allow those people to post regularly on our group anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you see posts in our group, they're all vetted and approved. Um, yeah. and you don't get stuck with some dickhead. I think as well, I've actually, you know, one of the best ways 
um, you know, that we've bought stuff is just through your group, you know, what you guys have created. Um, mm. You get to know, I think when you're in the group, you get to know a lot of people, you get to know the regular people, you get to know who, who people, you know, trust and stuff. And I definitely yeah. think like me personally, I mean, I think 99% of the stuff that we've bought that's in the MetaZoo has always been in your group. Um, so I think, you know, at least you know that the people in the group are trustworthy, you know, they're not going to scam you. Um, uh, and that is definitely something that I would recommend for anybody out there who, if they haven't joined the group, definitely join the group. Um, it's a good place to hang out. And just like in regards to what James mentioned as well, is that one thing that he can say about the MetaZoo community is that it's actually not as toxic as the Pokemon community. And I think that's because like everybody's like starting from the same point. Like nobody's like everybody's learning MetaZoo basically about the same time um obviously yeah. you know you guys are, pro are going to be more knowledgeable because you're you've been in pretty much from the beginning but um you know i think regardless of who it is when you go in there everybody is new to metazoo so i think that's the good thing about it is that and i have to agree with james that it's actually really less toxic place to hang out you know it's good everybody think, is willing to help you out and encourage you to to learn stuff as well yeah i think um i think that's not technically the pokemon uh community that's toxic i think it's certain groups and certain groups that allow certain people to be in those communities are the are the toxic ones like you know it's like it's like price bashes i fucking hate it like in reality yeah okay that card might have sold 500 bucks the other day I, i'll sell mine for 600 if you don't want to buy it fucking keep moving i don't give a shit what you think like yeah. you don't need to pop in and go oh hey you know, this was the last soul, just in case you didn't look. Oh, sorry, I didn't look. I'm actually in hospital having my fucking spine rebuilt because I fell off a four-story building the other day. I thought I'd put this card up. Last time I checked, this is what it sold for. You know, like, like I always say, if, you, if you've got a, an opinion on price, feel free to just DM somebody and say, hey, I thought I'd let you know, just so in case you didn't know, this is what this card sold for. But people yeah. find the need to, you know, want to do laughing emojis on price and shit like that. Like that, that, that is what toxic behavior is. It's not like a certain TCG community. It's the, it's, it's who you allow in your community and what you allow them to do or say, which is why we've always been on the front foot of either rejecting people, blocking people, removing comments or removing a post, all that sort of stuff, just to ensure that, that it's a safe place. So it's good to hear James say that, you know, he loves the MetaZoo community. Um, but in reality, it's a community that uh, myself, Danny and Matt want to be in. That's what we've tried to create. And the, the focus is obviously MetaZoo because we are a share for it, a love for it. But that yeah. was that was sort of what it was. Yeah. And I think, you know, like you said, everybody's asking in the um, in the comments, like, you know, what groups are you talking about? I mean, I think we both know, but let's move. Like, let's not. I'm not, I'm not talking group. about I'm not talking about any specific group at all. I say that yeah. with my hand on heart. There is a ton of different Facebook groups across a ton of different things. Not even like fucking collectibles and TCG related. Like, you know, Facebook Marketplace. So you go to like Lawnmowers R Us Facebook group and guys sell their lawnmowers in there. That shit happens all the time. You see it on a Facebook group like Blokes Advice. Guys yeah. ask a question and they get absolutely shit on by all these fucking fat trolls holding a beer up their ass. Like it's mm. it's just it's just toxic behavior in general. I don't I wouldn't I don't want anybody to pigeonhole any sort of uh, IP or product as a toxic, you know, uh, community when it's it's the people that are in there. And if the people that are meant to be the heads of those communities aren't managing those people, then they're allowing toxic behaviour. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of uh, the questions from the audience, um, just moving slightly away from that, it was a question that came through from Matthew Clark a little bit earlier, but I obviously we were talking, it was a little bit hard to keep up. Um, yeah. But Matthew did ask, um, do you think the playability of MetaZoo is the biggest draw to the biggest draw to it uh it 
It depends. It depends. I know that's what Mike wants it to be because that's why he created it. But, you know, did the guy that created um, Pokemon, whoever that Japanese guy was, I forget his name, you know, did, did he want people to be drawn to it because they're cute or because, like, like the it's 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 um it's yeah i don't really know how to sort of i don't know how to say articulate what is i'm what i'm fucking thinking and i'm trying to say but um but i think it's got multiple different things that uh, draw people in really yeah like for me right the playability did not draw me in i didn't come to metazoo to play the game admittedly now that i know how to play the game i fucking absolutely love it and it is so much fun. But for me, it was actually the cards. I was like, these feel familiar, but they're different. And I liked it. You know, like they kind of look like Yu-Gi-Oh cards. They kind of look like Pokemon cards. The artwork rocks, um, you know, and, and I just enjoyed it. That's what drew me in first was, was it was something familiar, but it was different. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, another question from Matthew Clark is, um, do you think the current downturn in TCG prices will cause a lasting effect on MetaZoo and its newish game? Uh, no, no. I think this is probably the best thing that could happen to, could have happened to MetaZoo because you can buy a full hollow first edition moth for in the realm of 250 to 350 400 bucks raw now when i got my first one i actually pulled it i sold one for 800 bucks yeah like and that's that's a lot of money for a card that's you know in a game that's still really really new um and now like people are able to sort of come in and get these things that even six months ago you couldn't get like they were too expensive i didn't buy a kickstarter booster box until uh the market came back on them I know people that paid 10, 12 and a half, 14 grand for Kickstarter yeah. booster boxes. And me, I'm not going to tell you what I paid How for mine. How much did but you pay for yours, Dean? Fucking a lot less than that. <laughs> Go on, you know, you want to. Nah, no, 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 no. I got mine. You even I got, said before I got that mine. you didn't want to say it. That's fine. But I got, got, I got mine from a, 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 a good friend in America who looked after me so I could put one into the collection. And that's, that's all that matters. It's not going anywhere. I mean, initially, if you listen to our podcast on episode one, Matt, Danny and I talk about uh, what are our biggest grails. Now, Danny says everything's a grail, but these were like meant to be our, like the hardest thing that we thought at the time that we'd probably n- never achieve. And I said, I want to get a Kickstarter box and then I'm going to go live and I'm just going to rip the whole thing open and enjoy it with everybody. Um, And now I've got one. I'm not going to do that. Well, for two reasons. Because before I got the box, I got a full holo, reverse holo Kickstarter Loveland Frogman and a reverse holo Kickstarter Mothman. And I've got a first holo Kickstarter, a a full holo Kickstarter Mothman that I'm buying. So... Other than that, like, I don't really, except for the experience, I don't really need to open the box. I'd rather Um, keep it sealed. Yeah, no, I I actually agree with you there. I think I would be more inclined to keep it sealed as well. I mean, to be fair, like, you know, if you've already got a lot of the cards that you want, it's an awesome display piece. Like, Nikki and I's goal is to get at least one booster box from each set and keep them sealed while we get the set. It looks so nice. It does. It looks so nice. And, and it's, it's small. Right. It's smaller. Like, look at my hand. It's smaller than a normal booster box. Yeah, it is. They're so much smaller. How many packs do you get in there? You still get 36. Okay. It's just... No box popping there. Right. Lame. Um... So, obviously, you went to America. I know that we've touched on that. Did you want to just, mm. like, quickly discuss a little bit about your time over there? I know, you, you know, you've mentioned the podcast. You have, you have talked about it. But I think it would be really good just to get a feel of what MetaZoo is like in America. MetaZoo in America is fucking massive. It's massive on a scale, like, compared to here, right? If you put MetaZoo and Pokemon, like, next to each other at a Collecticon, um, 
it's not like everybody's going to go to Pokemon and no one's going to go to MetaZoo. MetaZoo has a massive following. Um, I think at New York Comic Con, they're actually putting MetaZoo next to the Marvel booth because they've got to put the big ones all sort of in their respective areas. So um, it's huge over there. The lines were insane. Like we got, you saw the cards that I got signed. Um, I would have been standing in lines for like 12 hours total over the weekend or maybe 11 hours total to get those cards signed. Like to get these promos that they give out, the lines are fucking long, 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 long. Like, cause you know, everybody wants the exclusive stuff. It's early. Like everybody wants the exclusive stuff. And Mm -hmm. while I'm a promo fan, I was thinking about it um, earlier today. I was like, you know, well, Promos in the Pokemon space do well, but not necessarily as well as, um, you know, the the core sets, the base stuff. Because this is one of the questions. I don't know if it's coming up or not. People were asking, um, you know, do what are my thoughts around all these promo releases and stuff that MetaZoo do, and is it going to impact the core set? Uh, and not a fucking chance it is. Like... Because look at everything else. Like there's promos that Pokemon do, promos at Mac is fucking everywhere, like toys and shit. There's heaps of stuff. And look at a first ed base set Zard or a base unlimited Zard or, you know, these Neo sets and stuff like that. Everybody still wants the sets at the end of the day. They want the, the core stuff, the original stuff. Yeah. You know, they're not, they're not chasing the promo Zards, they're chasing the base Zard. Uh, and that's why I say to anybody that's, you know, new and just getting in, I'm like, you should get the um, you should get the second edition base set and just open that, yeah. open that stuff up, uh, open that stuff up, check it out and see what you like. And if you like it, then yeah, of course, you yeah. know, go to go try and get some first ad. I think um, you know, you did touch on that slightly. So one of the questions that we did get was, um, you know, Kirsty, um, and it is something that I have asked a few people, uh, you know, yourself included. I've even like, you know, had chats with Matt Christopher about it and stuff like that. And um, just in regards to, and I've mentioned it to a few people. And it, when I was stood in the line to Hobby Hangout last weekend, um, there was a couple of people there and we were talking about MetaZoo. And I was saying how much I enjoy it. And a couple yeah. of people was like, they enjoy it too, but the one thing that confuses them is that there's just so much out there at the moment and they don't even know like where to start. So touching on Kirsty's um, question is that um, looking at it from a TCG aspect of and from a, a collector's investment aspect, um, is there is a lot of product out there at the moment. For a newbie starting to look into MetaZoo, it can be very confusing and they don't know how to start. Like, what mm. would you recommend looking at buying first and like um, how to like first get into MetaZoo? What would be your first recommendation? Every single person is going to be different. You're going to like different things. You're going to collect different things. You're going to want different things. Like my love for like the love of Frogman. I didn't give a shit about the frog till I started playing and I learned what he could do in the game. And I was like, oh, that's sick. I love this guy. He's ugly. Like he doesn't look, you know, like appealing. He's not like cool like the Mothman is. But his gameplay ability made him, like, the best in the game. And I was like, this guy's sick. So then I yeah. wanted to collect, like, a bunch of those. Like, Matty C is a huge sealed collector. Like, he loves just collecting sealed stuff. I, I tried it. I don't really care for it. I can't do it. So now I keep one of each booster box sealed, and that's it. The rest of the shit I've opened or I've, I've sold it off. Um, people, you know, obviously see the popularity of the Mothman, which is based on two things. His folklore in America is big. There's a Mothman Festival. There's a Love and Frogman Festival. Um, and these have been around for, for decades and decades. But Mike also said the Mothman was his favourite card when he was asked early on. So it gained a bit of a following for that. I mean, it does look awesome. There's no doubt about it. It's a, it's a sick card. But um, I wouldn't, you know, it, it's... Like some people really, really love the Valentine's Day cards because that's 
that release, I think, was aimed, you know, to bring different sets of eyes or different views, whether they be female or children, you know, because the chibis are sort of a bit cute because it can be a little bit, a little bit dark sort of when you're looking at, uh, at some of the cards. Mm. It's not necessarily an anime, um, you know, like Pokemon was. It's, it's, mm. it's like Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! was an anime, but it wasn't cute like Pokemon was. Like, you look at those cards, like, they, they, can, they can be dark as well. So I think every person getting involved is, if you, if, you know, where to start is where you want to start. Start with what you like. I could tell you to go buy a, boff, a Mothman and you could get it and go, I don't like this. And then I give you a chibi fucking Loveland frog and you'd be like, this is so cute. This is what yeah. I want. Or, like, people love Bigfoot because they've heard of Bigfoot, like, it's like anything, like with Pokemon, when I got back into Pokemon, I didn't go and get base set or jungle. I liked Rayquaza, so I bought one and I bought another and I just kept buying them. Like oh, you did like electrodes. Nah, I'm like you, that was so funny. Oh my god. <laughs> How's that collecting going? You still got it? Nah, I was so it, thank God. Um yeah, I agree with you with what you're saying. So like um it is really hard to uh pinpoint or even say, oh, you should go out there and you should buy, you know, a cryptid nation set or whatever. I mean, I think with us, like, we actually started from Nightfall because we liked yeah. the artwork from Nightfall. Um, yeah. We liked the darkness of it and, you know, the cool, you know, Grim Reaper, um, yeah. that kind of artwork. I, we loved that. And um, we was like, right, okay, we'll start collecting from now and basically that's why we've done pretty much every set since then and um we've started to go back as well we've just started our cn21 not quite ready to go into the first editions just yet because we've got other things that we need to pay for but we will do eventually it is definitely something that we want to do um but i agree with you i definitely think you know if you want to get into it you know have a look at the card list see what kind of artwork you like if you want to are you you know think about the reasons why you want to open some meta zoo in the first place do you want to collect just to collect the sets are you going to be playing it that kind of thing there's a lot of stuff that goes into it but i definitely do i definitely agree in regards to there's no set answer that you because you don't know what people's likes and interests are no, that's right. And everybody's going to be different. Like I said, everybody's going to be different. They're going to want different things. They're going to enjoy different things. What's your favourite set? <sighs> Probably Nightfall. Yeah. 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 I enjoyed Nightfall. I enjoyed opening Nightfall. I've enjoyed opening all of them. I really do enjoy opening um, first edition as well, but that's because it's it's more scarce. But if I sit there and rip Nightfall open, like I could just keep doing it. And I did it for like a couple of months. I had a lot of Nightfall boxes. I just opened one every now and again randomly just on my own just to yeah. see what I pull. I mean, I was mainly hunting old scratch, but I still enjoyed it. You know, I was still really enjoying uh, pulling all the cards. So, um like for me as well, for me as well, um, the first thing I ever owned was an art set of first edition booster packs. And I was bored one day during COVID and I FaceTimed Matt and Danny and said, I'm just going to open them. I'm like, stuff, it. I'm not going to hold them. Why? Because that was why I bought them. Well, Matt, Matt convinced me to just, he's like, just get an art set and just put it away, man. And if it's worth it one day, you'll be happy about it. Mm -hmm. And I got bored and I just opened them up. And it was then... I was like, open them up. I opened up four packs, and I'm like, great. Now I need the whole set because I fucking. Did you this. pull anything good in your first four packs? Uh the very first card I pulled was a full hollow ghost train. Okay, that's a sick so, card. I like that one. Yeah, and that's one. It's one reason why I love it because I kind of pulled it and it's this pink, shiny, hollow ghost train thing. I was like, this is sick. Yeah. So, like, that was it. Like, it's making it's making me nostalgic now, just thinking about that moment. Yeah. It wasn't even that long ago, but like it was, it started a, a really cool journey. And um, yeah, I guess, yeah, if you just, that's, but yeah, I think I saw Paco said something before or tell them all buy a few packs of each set, see which ones you like. Yeah. I usually just say buy some second edition because it's cheap. 
Uh, it gives you a good insight to the core set of MetaZoo, like its original creation. Um, and I'm yet to find somebody who opens it up and says, no, nah, this is dog shit, I hate it. Even Azza from Welcome Stranger Collectibles, he came over, we had a good chat at the Hobby Hangout. I gave him a pack and he opened it up and he actually is like, it's actually, these actually aren't that bad. You know, like... Because he always gives MetaZoo shit. Oh, uh, he doesn't give it shit. He just says he, he, it hasn't been around long enough. Like, he doesn't want to, you know, obviously people do um, that follow him and, 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 and their group. Like, they... He's got to be careful what he says because if he's, you know, says something's good or something's yeah, not true. good, like people will take that as, you know, gospel. So mm -hmm. I've talked to him about it and he talks to me about it, you know, every now and again. Um, and he's like, yeah, I'm just, he's like, he's monitoring it, you know, he's watching to see sort of what happens. Yeah. Because um, if, it, if it succeeds, of course, he's going to get involved in it. You I'm know, surprised I mean, he's probably got about 10 boxes of first editions sat in a corner some, somewhere, just thinking it's in a few years' time, and it's like, you know, these, this is what, you know, making shitloads of money on it. Maybe. He's a Can't confirm man. or deny. Yeah, exactly. Um, cool. So I think there was a couple of questions that I do want to go through. Um, obviously, I think we've kind of touched on, you know, where should people start and look at you know, collect from a collector's point of view. Mel Atad also sent a similar similar kind of question. It was like, what booster packs or boxes would you recommend purchasing as a collector? Um, I think we've already kind of touched on that. Like, um, if, if, if for, for a collector, to... if you want to, if you want to, if you want to purchase something as a collector, you should, you know, in your in your seal collector, you should be aiming to get at least one of each booster box. That's yeah. it. Purely because you base that on the success of Pokemon booster boxes. Mm -hmm. So if that's what you're looking to get into it for, like you're like, oh, I like it, I just want to kind of add a few boxes to my my overall collection, like then that's go get one of each of the first dead boxes. Start yeah. with that. Yeah. You know, before yeah. it's too late. Because they the Nightfall's held out really well. Mm. Wilderness and CN2 had huge print runs and Seance is going back to sort of meet its market. So there will be a supply and demand sort of reissue again. Yeah. Like that's so going to happen. Yeah, let's quickly just talk about the print ones and why that would have an effect on the actual price of the booster boxes. So how many um, booster boxes were for first edition? Oh, like give me um, all the numbers. 2,500, uh, 25,000 for first edition. Okay. That's and it. Then, yeah. Wow. And then 50,000 for Nightfall. Yeah. And then it went CN2, 100,000. Wilderness, yeah. 100,000. And that's, but that's like 25,000 of each product. So 25,000 booster boxes, 25,000 spell books, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, it's a lot for a new game. It's mm -hmm. obviously bigger now. Um, but I think what happened was, and I know people that uh, are sitting on a lot of this sort of stuff is people saw the price for first dead booster boxes skyrocket because the, the print run was small, right? It was yeah. hard to get your hands on. Nightfall instantly doubled that. So there was a chunk of the market that bought Nightfall just to sit on it and go, oh, yeah, that's going to blow up. That's going to blow up. The prices in, in its defense have held well because it is still a shorter print run. Yeah. CN2 was released. CN2 should have been 100000 Right, it should have been a hundred thousand purely because the idea is that's not there. If you're buying a second edition of something to make money on it, then you're you don't ever invest any money because you don't know what you're doing. Exactly. Right, you just that's that's not what you do. It's not how you yeah. do business. That was created to get cards into people's hands that couldn't get first edition to be able to play the game. That's yeah. what its existence was. So I agree with that. I then think Wilderness should have been 50,000 because I think that's where the actual market is. You know, CN2 can sit on shelves. Let it sit on shelves. See what happens in two, three years. I bet you yeah, they won't be fucking 60 US a box then when everybody yeah. needs those cards or wants those cards and they only made 100,000 of those boxes. So, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's one of those ones. And then, yeah, Wilderness, Wilderness probably was too much. Yeah. Too many. 
Um, but if they didn't print that as a as a core set, then they wouldn't know that either. Right, so they've gone. All right, well, the the market demand isn't there for wilderness. Is that because the cards are playable, and you know collectors will have all collected the set, but there's still so much stock out there, yeah. so they probably overshot the mark. Um, I, think, um, I reckon. George I reckon Lopez is correcting correcting you in the comments. He's saying, and um, wasn't the CN two six sixty two thousand? Well, look. In reality, we don't have uh, any written figures on these numbers. They're all hearsay. So yeah. we'll see. But uh, no, nah, I'm pretty sure it was 100,000. Oh, cool. Um, in regards to redeemable items, what are redeemable items? Uh, it, it, basically, it is what it says on the tin. You know, it's, uh, it's like a, I think the very first one might have been the uh, fan art blister, the fan art blister promo. Mm hmm. So you had to actually buy one of the blister promos uh, to be able to enter the next fan art contest, which is great because it means that you they're sort of going, all right, well, if you want to enter the next contest, you've got to support the people that won the last contest. So, you know, they're redeemable for that. You've got the revive cards that came out. Um, basically, there's, you know, two sorts of prints. Some of them are just the promo cards. Some of them have got a little redeemable number on them which basically you just scratch off and you go to the website and you can redeem a skateboard with that artwork on it. It's just, it's just another way of them a, a, a sort of awarding, you know, collectors in one way yeah. or another. Same with like the... Do you just the, get them through like promos or do you get them like, can you get them anywhere or? It depends. Like, like I said, the fan art blister is redeemable so you can enter the contest. So that was, you know, one like promo set. You've got the one for um, Revive. So they're basically just promo sets that they put on sale and in usual MetaZoo fashion, they sell out really, really quick. Um, but that's for two reasons, because uh, there are scalpers out there, like in every TCG, and they can go and get fucked. Um, yeah. But also because they're, they're not printing a lot of them either. Like it's... It's it's a minute amount. Like a lot of people buy this stuff and they open it all up. You know, like that's what me and the guys do when we get stuff. So um, I'm assuming people do the same thing. But um, what was the other one? Well, the other redeemable was like you know the golden tickets from Wilderness. Yeah. Which is just pure insanity. Like what they're doing with those. So there's the golden ticket. There's a bronze ticket. There's a silver ticket, and they give you different like different things, don't they? Well, we haven't seen a bronze or a silver ticket yet. So, you know, if they exist um, and somebody pulls a bronze ticket, that is redeemable for a, a Kickstarter booster box. If they pulled a silver one, then it's meant to be redeemable for a prototype Mothman. And then the two golden tickets that have been pulled, um, they re they're going to be redeemable for uh, an equity share, so a small share of MetaZoo's uh, stock. Not bad. Which technically, uh, technically, I mean, I think Mike owns all of it at the moment because he's got a board of directors, but it's more an advisory board of directors. I don't think they actually own. They don't own any of the stock. Yeah, so it's not. It's not like a publicly listed company or anything. No, he hasn't. He hasn't IPO'd it yet. No, no. Yeah. No. No. no, so that's that's really interesting, and I think that's really cool because, like, and this is one thing that I said that really drew me into MetaZoo as well. Here he is, is in the comments, Aaron. <laughs> uh, uh, um, the big man. Yeah, <laughs> um, he must. His ears must have been burning. That's what it was. They must have been burning. burning. They must yeah, have been burning. Um, I think that's one thing that I actually do like about MetaZoo is that it really gives you. Um, a real feeling of a chase like yeah. um you know you can open pokemon and you can you know pull a charizard but there's like thousands of charizards out there and literally everybody has got you know that same charizard like you know there's there's thousands of it the print runs are huge there's so much out there and i remember to this day 
I was watching um <laughs> I was watching uh, BJ um put open some packs with Nathan and Bozzy and it was a Saturday morning and I was in the hairdressers and I was getting my hair done and literally yeah. I was like I was ignoring my hairdresser because I was like, I need to watch this, I need to watch it. And I was driving back from the hairdresser and I still had my stream on and BJ opened that box topper and he pulled the red ink and yeah. I lost my shit. I had to pull over to the side of the road. I was like, oh my God, like, and I still remember that. And it's just, um, it's it's such a good feeling to get a feeling of a real chase in a, in a TCG. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that because I was hosting clients at the footy and everybody's fucking blowing up my phone going, oh, my God, BJ's just done this, BJ's pulling this. I'm like, any other time, sweet, but I've got like this finance firm with a couple of hundred mil that I'm hosting at the footy. I'm like, my phone just will not stop going off. <laughs> I'm just like, sweet. I text BJ, I'm like, dude, that's awesome. I'll, I'll call you later. Like, I'm working right now. But I remember it was like a Saturday. It must have been a Saturday or a Sunday yeah, Arbo or something. Good. But yeah. Um, yeah, it was unreal. It's it's an interesting one. Somebody asked this question, so you might as well address it now as well. Um, whilst I love the idea of those one in a hundred sort of rares, um, they're almost too rare. Mm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it's okay now, and and they are increasing it. Let's be honest, because in UFO they've done 120 secret rares. Although there's 12 different cards and there's only 10 of each one that are actually mm. out there, you still got you know 20 more chances of of pulling one of the secret rares. Yeah. Um, and there's been a, there's been a plenty of talk about it over the journey. I think it's still it's small enough. They don't have to change it yet. But as it gets bigger you can imagine the secret red pool will get bigger. It's not always going to be these one of a hundred cards. Like BJ, you know, I've told him to never sell that red ink. I'm like, just fucking forget about it. Yeah. He almost sold it to me once. And I spent a long time, a half an hour on the phone telling him why he shouldn't let me buy it. Because if he does, well, I would have bought it. I was like, but you're not getting it back ever again. Like it's, yeah. I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it for this reason. And this is why you should keep it, you know, yeah. and he has. And it was the first one pulled in Australia that we know of anyway. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we haven't seen great. any others pulled live, but. And it was such an exciting experience. I'm so glad that I was actually there to watch it. But, um, you know, I get, I get what you mean. Like, it seems pretty impossible. And the amount of stuff that you're actually, like, opening, um, you know, the chances of you ever pulling one are relatively, you know, slim to non none. Um, yeah. Uh, Aaron was saying, um, uh, what did he say? He's mentioned something quite funny. It was like, I... I are we teasing him? No, we're not teasing you. We're just saying how much you actually secretly love Metazoo. That's what we were saying. Uh, just talking about slowly warming you up to the idea of it, as I. That's all, bro. That's <laughs> all. But um, um, but yeah. So I think in the future they will create uh, more achievable sort of secret rares. You know, like it's not always going to be. Um, one of a hundred it's not going to be that hard forever it's right now it's great it's sort of it works for the market um but yeah that it's something that they will the i it'll change over time yeah leah's asked this question a couple of times and i feel like i need to um, mention it because um i feel bad if we do it he said what's your opinion of long term for metazoo as a tcg and ccg ccg I don't know what that means. So like a collectible card game? I'm assuming that's what oh, it means. Yeah. Maybe. yeah, it must be. Instead of a trading card game? Yeah. Um, I think it will still be here 25 years later without a shadow of a doubt because it's making waves already. It's being impersonated on the weekly by other guys trying to create, you know, new TCGs. The nostalgic factor is there for big countries like northern america because it's all about their folklore anyway so it's blown up over there once cryptid nations sets are finished which i think we've got seance native and war so there's three to go then it's yeah. moving into yoke islands which is japanese so if it takes off in japan based on their folklore and their cryptids 
well then it's going to be worldwide, just like Pokemon was. That's where Pokemon came from. Like, it's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna go away. Yeah. Like, you you could record this and sh- play it back to me for the rest of my life. If it blows up and it disappears overnight, and we never ever see it again. Yeah. Um, but then, if it does, I've got I've got all this MetaZoo stuff that uh, they're like relics, right? Of this TCG that once existed and now has com- took over the world, and disappeared like really, really quickly. Um, it's got the legs. They don't even have an IP yet, right? Like, you know, it, it's not like they've based this off uh, an anime or something where they could go and go. All right, well, if everybody loves a show. Let's make a card game out of it. It's a yeah. card game that they're doing it the other way around. It'd be like it'd be like if Magic the Gathering did it because Magic the Gathering is enormous worldwide, right? Yeah, but that's that's more TCG like players that love that stuff, not like Pokemon collectors that love that stuff. Mm. If they went and made a a movie about Magic the Gathering or TV shows about that, that'd blow up. But that's not what they want to do. Yeah. Whereas Metazoo will go down that route. Mm. And um, just another one from Aaron is like, what does Metazoo have um, that other TCG don'ts don? Um, how are they going to compete? What do they have? Well, the the main reason why it started was its fourth wall ability in gameplay, and that's their that's their focus. That was that the the in the money that they're investing into gameplay is what sets it apart. Like, I don't know, what did, what did the person that just won the Pokemon World, what did he get in London? Do you know what the prize money was? Um, good question. I absolutely have no idea how much he got. Yeah. Well, Metazoo's first tournament was 100,000 USD cash to the yeah. first place we were. You know, 50 grand to second, I think 25 grand to third, plus like another 60,000 in product to get people to play the game and really use the, the fourth wall ability like we did. Like I said, there was people there carrying fucking bonsai plants around, fishing rods, dressed up in certain outfits, you know, to to be able to use the the meta of their cards, like their their meta ability, the fourth wall, you know, which has changed it. And and I speak to Magic the Gathering players that go, that's actually really cool. Like I love that if we got this or we're doing that or we're in this place, like I can have this or I can have that and that changes. It's... It's different. The guy who won, tell me his name again. Easton. Easton, that's it. It was it his birthday as well, and one of yeah, and it was yeah, yeah. And if it, if it wasn't his, if it wasn't his birthday, a certain card that he played that day would have cost him more and would have had one less ability, and he probably wouldn't have won. Yeah. And because it was his birthday on that day, he was able to play the first anniversary celebrations for cheaper. And it did an extra 25 damage and he won a hundred thousand dollars in that tournament on that day because of the fourth wall, you know, ability, like the, the real difference. It's the real difference, you know, in, in MetaZoo. It's not the, the only thing MetaZoo really needs to compete with or that I would say it's competitor is, is Magic the Gathering. It's not competing with Pokemon. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're not, we don't have video Game Boy games. We're not, it's not on cheese TV. It's, Completely different era, completely different shit. People that, you know, it's 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 not that. Yes, their IP might uh, create certain things like that at some point. You know, they might make TV shows and that. Like Mike's, there's six, six comics that they did and now Mike's just doing a book instead. Like yeah. they, they're in talks with Netflix about shows in the future. They're talking to Epic Games about video games. But there's yeah. no rush because that's not what we're that's not what we're looking to or that's not what they're like that's not what they're building it around. Mm-hmm. They're building it around the what you said at the start. Basically, what you said at the start when you Google it and they talk about the meta and the fourth wall effects. It's about bringing the real world environment into a TCG arena, into a gameplay arena. That is their prerogative, and they're doing a very good job of evolving that. Uh, along the way, as well as adding things that people want, you know, medicine listen to people. Yeah, no, and that's actually one thing that I actually really agree with is that it is 
it's nothing like Pokemon to me. And, um, you know, I've been doing a lot of research. I don't really know a lot about Magic the Gathering, but, um, you know, I've watched YouTube videos of um, uh, people opening, like, the really old packs, you know, the um, Alpha and the Beta, and, um, you know, you watch, and I, you gain a little bit more information because I don't really know a lot about it, but I know in the really old cards there's a lot of value there. And yeah. um, it actually just gives me Magic the gathering vibes it, it doesn't give me pokemon vibes like whatsoever that's what i mean because that's that's its space that it's in it's not in it's not in the 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 multi-generational um sort of oh, what's the right way to sort of describe it like pokemon is across all facets doing different things right like you know, it would be hard to say what part of the Pokemon company is their greatest revenue, right? Mm -hmm. Like, where all where does all their money come from? Is yeah. it from the plushies? Is it from the cards? Is it from the video games? Is it from the TV show and the ads that they sell when they've got their TV show on? Like, where I'd love to see those figures because for MetaZoo, it's purely only the cards. Mm -hmm. Like, that's because that's what it is. It's yeah. just a card game. It's just a card game. And that, that's their focus. I'm not saying it's not going to evolve over time, but this is what people need to understand when you're trying to compare a multi-generational, multi-platform um, uh, IP like Pokemon to a very small TCG that's a year old that's purely focusing on changing gameplay and adding sitting, sitting in a dark room with your mate playing Magic the Gathering and go on, fuck, well, if we go sit out on the beach over there in the sun and we can see the ocean and there's trees, like, everything's going to change. We yeah. played in this dark room or we played out there, they're going to be two different games. Like, that alone just changes the way the games are played. Like, I saw on one of the American pages the other day, this guy was, him and his mate went to a baseball game. And, you know, baseball games are boring half the time. So they were playing medicine. People started crowding around them like this video. They're all just crowding around, sort of going, what is going on? What do you know? What do you want? Like, trying to figure it out, you know? Like, you just, I'm assuming, I, don't, I, I can't say for sure, but you'd be assuming um, that, you know, there would, there would have been factors into that game that came into play because they were at a baseball. There is a Sam Sinclair's baseball bat card. I don't know if it has a fourth ball effect or not, but, you know, something like that could have had something to do with it. So, they're just, they're two, they're two very, very different things. Same yeah. as, like, you know, I would say Pokemon and Digimon are the same kind. I would say Magic the Gathering and MetaZoo are the same kind. Yeah. MetaZoo just shot to stardom, which is why everybody's talking about it. If it didn't shoot to stardom, I'd still be collecting it. Aaron saying the sloppy one talking about MetaZoo should be available on iTunes. There was another thing that Spotify. he mentioned as well about something. Um, how Spotify. did Gary King Pokemon get, in, get involved in MetaZoo? So, yes, Gary, the that. one with all the Charizards, how did he become involved in MetaZoo? Steve Aoki, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Steve Aoki. Um, Steve Aoki got involved uh, purely because he also is a big fan of cryptids, uh, mm -hmm. loves the game. Um, he played a lot of Magic the Gathering as well, like Post Malone does. He plays a lot of Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Um, and Steve Aoki, obviously, being just a big Pokemon collector too, is friends with Gary, King Pokemon. So um, I think it's just a natural sort of progression. Like Steve Aoki gets into MetaZoo, loves it gives Gary some stuff. Gary's like, shit, I actually kind of like this as well. But you got to remember that whilst for us, a Mothman is just like, that's what a Mothman is to an Australian person, right? That's what, if I say a Mothman, you go, well, that's what he is. Mm -hmm. But these guys, when they're like six, seven years old at fucking one of those camps in America that they all go on for like holidays and stuff, like out in the bush, like what you see on the movie, The Parent Trap, and they yeah. sit around and talk about ghost stories. They're talking about the, the Mothman Wendigo, and they're talking about all this stuff. Like, it's super nostalgic to them. Like, they've been thinking about it for years, and finally someone decided to just put them on cards. Yeah. Like, um, but so, so, you know, when Gary sees that stuff, he goes, this is sick. 
It takes yeah. me it takes me back fifty years to Ace High Ranch in Idaho and they were talking about, you know, the Mothman. Like it, it hits for them. Like it, and that's what I'm saying, you know, for for us the nostalgia's not necessarily there. But, you know, if you take it back to nineteen ninety nine and let's say we have as much internet access as we did in nineteen ninety nine Metazoo would still be doing well in America, but it wouldn't be here yet. Yeah. You know? But because and now we have that whole life online. Yeah, no, definitely. And like, if you put it in perspective, when the Drop Bear promo came out, let's not talk about the negativities of that. But, um, you know, everybody wanted one because we knew what it was. Yeah. 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 And it looks cool, though. It looks cool. Like, yeah. it looks cool. It's this crazy-ass little koala just doing, you know, crazy things so um yeah ready to it's, tear you apart. yeah that's right and that's that that's sort of our our first or second sort of taste like there's a kangaroo in and a, and a croco dingo in ufo because obviously australia is getting bigger so they're they're making note of that and they're going all right let's try and put in a couple of of uh of a couple of things there's going to be a um I'm not sure which set it is. I think it'll probably end up being native, um, like some indigenous uh, like folklore, like Yowie and things like that. Mike said he's been doing a lot of research into a few, uh, you know, indigenous folklore because one thing the Australian indigenous community have is some amazing like folklore history stories like that. Mm -hmm. If we knew more about it as a country, then you know you'd probably relate more to to cryptids in general. But you know we don't. Yeah. Maybe it's a good learning curve. Maybe you should bring cryptids into um, school education. <laughs> Maybe they should. Maybe they should. Um, what do you think the things that Meta do could do better? A few things. But, you know, that's just my personal sort of yeah. opinion. Um, they need a... They're, they're growing at a rapid rate. So customer service in any aspect of life should always be number one. It's always customer service. So the, you, need to, you need a big customer service team. The first thing that we ever do with any of the, the companies that I, I work with is focus on, on customer service area because even if your products aren't necessarily that great or exactly what someone needs, if they have a good experience and good service, then they're going to keep coming back. Yeah. So customer service is one. They used to have really bad distribution issues. Um, now they're not so bad. They're still not perfect, but they're nowhere near as bad as they used to be. Yeah. Um, but again, these are, you know, coming from a background in, in a few other businesses, the scale is, is shot up so quickly. It's shot up so quickly. And Mike's got a few people around him. He's, that he's brought in along the right, you know, uh, uh, on the way, uh, but not enough, not enough. He needs more more help so he can focus on what MetaZoo is and actually have the right people around him and trust them to go and do what he needs them to do to to keep to keep everything turning. Um, but in the realm of their products, their sets, their artworks, their games, they fucking nail it every single time. It's purely. Uh, internal business organization things that I think they need to change or update. Mm -hmm. um, no, cool. That's good to know. Um, Aaron, as you said, how many MetaZoo cards have you graded? What's the ratio of tens and under? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, I've graded a few now, um, but I grade them all with your official partner at CGC, Azza. Um, and I'd say every. Well, every 10 cards I send away, I get one 10. I get a lot of 9.5s. Um, so, you know, probably PSA 10s, to be fair. Um, earlier cards do grade a little harder. But that said, my I haven't told anybody this, except the boys um, that are in my admin mod chat. My Grim Reaper sample, I got a CGC 9.5 on it. Wow. So that's I didn't realise that you sent it off. Yeah, I did. I sent it off. Oh, amazing. I was hoping it would get a 10 because then I wouldn't have to crack it, but now I'm probably going to crack it and send it to PSA. 
because yeah. I know it'll get a PSA 10. Yeah. Um, uh, I was going to keep it as a 9.5, but I know it's a 10. So, mm. it, and it got, it got a nine on the surface, which blows my mind. I'm going to have to re- inspect it because I didn't think there was anything on there. It was, uh, it was, it was pretty clean. Well, all right. So let's do um, your five favorite things. So the next thing that I was going to move on was basically some of your grills, your five, th- you know, five favorite things from your personal collection that you've got. Uh, do us a bit yeah. of a show and tell. I would love to, um, but most of them aren't here because <laughs> I was yeah. still waiting for them to come back. So that Grim Reaper is one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you know, the sample version of that. So that's what it looks like. But most so people here will know. Anyway. Yeah, it's got a black border like this, which is another sample card of mine. Yeah. So my Grim collection is growing. Um, I've got... Uh, I've got another one of these that's signed and doodled on as well. That's at PSA getting graded right now. So I'm excited for that to come back. Speaking of the drop there, here's one. Yeah. Is that one of your grills? Nah. I like the drop there. I sent one to CGC. I got a 9.5. This one, uh, this one, I don't think this one's centering's worse, which is why I sort of kept it. I'm holding onto that for another giveaway. A bit yeah. further down the track, I wanted to wait till it was a bit, um, a bit further down. Uh, you know, the Mothman are great. This is sick because I, I pulled this Mothman myself yeah, and sent it to CGC, and it got a nine point five on the centering. Like, yeah, <sighs> still a ten there for CGC. Yeah, and then well, this well, this is the a Kickstarter Blood Ruby that I opened up and sent that off and got a CGC ten. Nice. But again, 9.5 on the centering. I don't know where they're getting that from because I've got a centering tool. Yeah. And I'd say they were both 10s. And then obviously my Kickstarter box that I flashed before. But a lot of the stuff that I really cherish isn't here right now. Yeah. It is a way, it is a way of getting graded. Um, like one of the cards is my, my player stamped uh, full hollow lightning in a bottle. Um, mm-hmm. which was from a player pack that I got from competing in the Casters Cup tournament. And I opened it while I was in line for seven hours waiting to get cards signed with all these guys. And we... <laughs> <laughs> nice as. That and was... then we... I pulled it. Uh, I pulled it out of this pack. And it was, I think it was the first one that anybody saw. Like, yeah. basically, because I'd literally just got the pack. I was probably the fifth or sixth per- person in that queue brought it over, ripped it open and saw it and everybody was like, we all just start, and start jumping around because like, this is sick because that card is a staple to any deck but doesn't come in full hollow. So they made it full hollow to release it with the player stamp for Caster's Cup. So that's at PSA getting graded. I don't know what the grade is yet. I'm still waiting for it to come back. Fuck, I hope it gets a 10. I don't think it will. I think it'll get a 9. But um, ah, Danny James, my boy's in the house. Oh, he's here. Um, he made it. <laughs> well, you would have. I think you would have been at footy training, um, and his team Brisbane are probably losing right now. Maybe he wasn't. Actually, Maybe Melbourne wasn't Storm are playing at the moment. I have no idea what the score is. So, if anybody knows the score right now, please let me know. Um, and the footy score. Yeah. Um, the he said because hey, I've no. also got I've got um I've got my first ed, second ed sets of Cryptid Nation. Uh, Nightfall, Wilderness, UFO. I've got another binder with just like random promos. My sample cards, I like a lot. There's a couple other cards at CGC. Like there's not, it's hard to just say a top five now. It's really, really hard. I would say the five Grim Reaper cards that I've got, like my two samples and then the Collecticon Grim, the two signed Grims that I have. Like the Grim Reaper for me, um, I did always like it when I picked up the sample. I obviously really sort of fell in love with it because the card looks so good. But for me, when you talk about cryptids, like everybody in Australia knows who the Grim Reaper is. Yeah. So it was easy to sort Rob of. said, do you have any um, revived skateboards or redeemables to show off? Revived skateboards? I don't have any skateboards. I have uh, the only revived card that I've got right here is the Loveland Frogman. So, like, so came, that's where the grey stuff would have been. Oh, yeah. That covers it, and that's the code that you scratch off. 
and then you put, put that code in on the website and then they send you a skateboard with this artwork on it. That's still got a 9.5. Is that one so that you sure. pulled to yourself? No, I bought this. Yeah. Okay. I bought it. Oh, actually I do. I have this one too. I got the unrefined chaos crystal. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's one of 50. There's only 50 of those in the world. So it's oh. technically more red than rarer than a red ink, I guess. Yeah. Well, they so you've always really got nice that. Color. Yeah, I've always got that, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was quite funny because, like, we were saying last time I was speaking to Lee, I think when we did our interview with Lee, um, I was showing him the unicorn that I bought off you, the signed unicorn. And yeah. it's really hard to put an estimate of how many they are, like, in the world, you know, the cast of cup ones, because you just really don't know the numbers. We have no idea. We think there's 75 of each yeah. because... I think with these ones, so this is one of the ones that came with the jerseys. Yeah. And I believe there was, yeah, apparently, no, how, what was it? Uh, was that right? No. 35, 75, maybe 110 or maybe less. I think, I think that what we heard was there's about 35 of each shirt, medium, small, medium, large, yeah. and each shirt came with a promo. So, oh yeah, I forgot to have this too. This is one of this is from the first edition, the first top set. That's awesome. So it's got it's serialized. It's number nine six three and nine nine nine. Love it. That's actually very very me. Can you show it again? Oh, you want to buy it? Yeah, well, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. I love that. The Mothman in the middle above Sam yeah. is really cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, well, buy it. <laughs> I'm always buying your stuff. Um, all right, cool. Um, so the final thoughts then in regards, it's been an awesome like interview. Thank you so much um, for coming on. Um in regards to your thoughts and the feelings, um, in regards to MetaZoo Nation Australia, like where do you see it going? What's your hopes and dreams for the future? Um, you know, what do you have planned um, coming up? Uh, MetaZoo Nation Australia will continue to do what it does, which is purely educate people and provide them with a safe space to ask questions about MetaZoo, acquire MetaZoo, learn to play MetaZoo, talk about MetaZoo, whatever it is you want to do um, regarding MetaZoo, that's what it's there for. Uh, that's, you know, what it'll remain as. Um, yeah, it's, there are other things in the works um, that what's not necessarily MetaZoo Nation Australia, myself and Kenzie are working on something, um, but that's purely uh it's more business for ourselves separate from this um you know we'll still do the podcast the instagram you know it's just it's just there to, to help it grow we're just going to keep doing what we're doing keep plugging away at it you know we're not um yeah we're not i'm not i've never ever tried to shove it down anybody's throat right like and because nobody did that to me at the start yeah yeah good ever Good. You should be thinking about it. We've already said um, that you should have at least 10 first edition booster boxes uh, hidden away somewhere for the future. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, fuck, what was I saying? Yeah, nobody shoved it down my throat. So like, I'm not doing that to anybody else. I've always just said, like, you know, buy some packs, open it up. If you like, it's like at the hobby hangout. All I did was I sold like 200 bucks worth of stuff. Um, and then I just stood there and gave out booster packs for the rest of the day. And it was yeah. fucking unreal. It was yeah. awesome to see little kids ripping them open, adults coming over and opening them up, you know, just going, you know, this, this is, this is kind of cool. Like, you know, they'll, they might see it. Like if they had a small pass MetaZoo, um, well, it's not in any stores here, but like in America, it's in Walmart, it's in Target. You walk, if you've opened some at, at, a, at a conference two weeks ago and then you walk past Target and you see a thing for a blister pack for 12 bucks, you'd be like, oh, I'll buy that. Nah, thanks, Azza. You're a gun, brother. Um, 
you know, then they'd, they'd buy us. That was the whole point. The whole point was to just stand there and hand out packs and let people enjoy it. Even if somebody opened it and they didn't like it, they didn't say that. They were just like, thanks, man. Thanks. Like, they're like, do you want to back them up? No, no, keep them. Like, you know, it's just, it's just, it's good fun. I would have, I would have done, I would have done the same, you know, with uh, another game or another something else if, if I felt this way about it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think MetaZoo Nation Australia will just continue to grow, um, just continue to do its thing. You know, like we don't push. We ran one giveaway once to get members in. Now we just give away stuff whenever we can, whenever we go live, just to give away stuff. Like, because we don't, I don't, we don't want it to, we don't want it to just be full of people that aren't interested. We want to let it grow organically. And that's where it's at now. That's where we're just leaving it. We let it do that. Yeah. And we'll exactly. continue to do that. You've got to your best point and, you know, if you get more people, that's a bonus. But if not, you're happy where you're at. Do you know? That's the well, that's it. That's it. You and I talk about it all the time, right? And I was saying the yeah. other day, we have like 1,100 and something members and my insights are saying there's 957 were active in the last week. Yeah. Like, that's what matters. Like work off percentages in life, in business, yeah. in investments, whatever it is. Work off your percentages because that's that's what actually matters. Hundred percent. And you know, you're all about you know the people who are actually interacting with the page rather than you know people that just join and don't want to participate. That's the main thing. Yeah, or people like Parker who keep trying to hijack my live stream. Get out yeah. of here. Maybe Paco needs his own live stream. Get him and Mini, him and um, Mini Bricks to run. That'd be fun. Um, all right. So we last week you did a first edition box opening, and mm. part of that box opening, um, Nikki and I bought a few packs, and one of the packs was to be opened. Um, we we are going to open it, by the way, to somebody who asked a question in our. We're going to do this right now. Tonight. We're going to do it right now. Do you have the pack? I do. I think we're going to put it. Oh, it's right here. Fuck, you imagine if this is a Mothman? Woo! I know. That would be so cool. Imagine. Right, so we're going to do a duck race for it. So we've got a list. Um, Nikki's done it. Well, Nikki's been working away. Um, so we've got Kirsty, Danny, Cameron... Um, Mel, Matthew, Benjamin, Packer, Jeremiah, Le Jeremiah, Leah, Aaron, and Brock. So we had a fair few questions in the chat. These are the people that came up, and um, we will do sixty-nine seconds because we know that that's your favourite number. Whenever everyone <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll shuffle a couple of times and we'll see who wins. Let's go. That reminds me, I need to do a, uh, I'm going to do one for our MetaZoo After Dark. We're going to give away, we're going to run the duck race for that. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. No, that is um, imagine if Aaron uh, like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's in a good, as is in a good position right now to win it because he's gone early. He'll go back a little bit and then he can shoot again at the end. But I watch enough of these duck races. I think it's going to be Benjamin Trent. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, to be honest, I don't. I never win duck races. I always uh, end up in them, but I never win. So I don't know what I need to do to be a winner here. But, uh... I'm in them. I'm in them as well. But in in all reality, it's just a numbers game. If you're going to get one duck in something, then it's you're minimising your 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 risk but you're you're also not um you know taking a chance to, yeah, to exactly. actually give yourself a crack at it. So oh it's Maddie Clark. It is gonna Maddie be Clark. Oh I don't know it could oh. be anyone. Danny James Who is it? Da Danny James. Danny James. No, <laughs> oh, no. We'll call him Jammy James. Um, he comes uh, in for five minutes at the end of the stream and he wins himself a first edition booster pack. That is so lucky. Congratulations. Is he even here? If he's um, not here. Not. If he's not here. Um... Somebody just tag him and we'll open it. Yeah, let's go, Dean. Okay. Good Opening luck. Imagine if it's the Mothman. 
Well, whatever it is, it has near perfect centering. This is going to be weird. I've never had to do it this way around before. Who was second? Oh, I don't know. I got rid of it. Sorry, we'll have to watch it back. Is, it, is all the writing backwards for you as well? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Thank God it's not a hoop snake. <laughs> Light beam. Uh, I think it's the next one. No, nah, it's one after. Oh, it is. Oh, there you go. No. Nice. Reverse hollow tears. You know, the good thing yeah. is that's Danny's favorite beastie. Is it? Yeah. No way. It was meant to be. And do you know what's meant to be? That? Um, the other two packs that I that we opened, we got, was it um, the Death Beam and we got the full hollow one of them. You did. So, They're right here. So you got the Death Beam. Yeah. Which is a great card because it was part of the original sample set because that's my yeah. version. That's my sample mm -hmm. set version. Yeah. So that's a banger. And then you pull that Lacusa from your free UFO pack. That's correct, yeah. And then, yeah, you got the full hollow version. The full hollow version. Well, there you go. It was meant to be. That's um, Daniel's full um, free pack. Thanks, Daniel, for getting involved. Do you want to know something okay. funny? I've seen Danny's passport, and his name is Danny. It is Danny. It's Danny. It's yeah. not Daniel. It's not Daniel. Wow. That Blew is... my mind. Danny. <laughs> it's actually just Danny. How much is the first edition pack worth at the moment? How much were we selling it? 35 each? 35 each, probably, but that was because of all the stuff I was giving away as well. I still lost like $1,500 on that. But yeah. um, 30 bucks, I'd say 30 to 35 bucks. Mm. Not bad. I mean, it's a nice little giveaway. It's not a huge amount of money, but it was nice to give something away and, um, you know, give something back to people that actually get involved. So it's quite cool. Well, that's it. Like, you, a, a first edition PSA 10 Mothman still sells for around 750 to 800 bucks. At its peak, it was about 1500 But, yeah. you know, now it's sort of sitting consistently where it's at, which is funny because, you know, like... Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just the Mothman. It's just mm -hmm. the Mothman. Well, it wasn't a Mothman that Danny got, but at least it was one of his favourites. That's there. Uh, no, that's, that's right. Really cool. And he'll, he'll be happier with that. Yeah, cool. Amazing. All right, Dean. Well, um, any final thoughts? Any final thoughts? Not really. Not really. Just, no. you know, it depends. Uh, you know, go... Yeah, I don't know. Just thanks for having me. Yeah, no, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. Aaron's asked, um, can he buy three more packs and do another duck race? I don't. I would have to open another booster box to yeah. do that. <laughs> I think um, that that's the problem because you the 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 actual pack opening the booster box already opened and um, the vault they all sold out so. It was. It's pretty hard unless you want to crack open a full box. Unless you want to buy a full first edition booster box right now. Um... Uh, <laughs> uh, no, appreciate the uh, appreciate the gesture, as but look. Um, I think for for us, you know, if you if you're not on the Facebook groups, jump on the groups. You know, if you really want to an insight into MetaZoo, you need to listen to our podcast on Spotify. We, yeah. you know, we do a lot, uh, a lot of talking. That's the whole point. But, you know, we cover off a lot. We, we think we, and we really enjoy doing it. We have fun doing it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the Instagram is, you know, the Instagram's good. You'll see glimpses into our collection if you follow the Instagram. Um, and yeah, jump into our, our Discord server. The other thing too is if you don't want to be in, the big MetaZoo one, and you're in our one, we have the announcements linked straight to ours anyway, so you're not going to miss anything. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and at least then you're just there with an Aussie community that you know. So, Yeah. No, amazing. And, yeah, definitely go and, um, you know, go and follow the Facebook group. It's a group 
community and also the podcast as well. The podcasts are, are, are really um, insightful and the links in the chat, I believe Nikki's put the link in the chat as well for people to go and follow and go and have a listen. Um, I've listened to every podcast so far and it is a good laugh. It's good to... Um, <laughs> you know, hear you, your guys' like thoughts and, and stuff. And, you know, I don't know, it's, it, it's a good it's a good thing. It's good to learn. It's good to forget your feelings. And, um, yeah, so thank you. Yeah. No, it's good because we, we all have different opinions as well. Like, we don't we don't even think the same thing. So it makes it, uh, it, makes it a good listen. But, yeah. But thanks for having me on. I'm excited to see you on the weekend again. Yeah, I love that yeah. we get to touch up so frequently. So yeah, and that might be the last time I see you for a while because you'll be housebound with the puppies, right? I, we've got yeah, we've got um, bulldog puppies that are coming on Tuesday, obviously, and um, we are going to be absolutely like crazy busy over the next like nine weeks. So. Um, yeah. We'll we'll see what happens. We've got a few things, you know, to keep the page involved and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's good. It'll be good to catch up with you on the weekend, definitely, and um, say hi before we, it's too late and we're you know we're housebound. So um, yeah. and yeah, you can give me my cards then as well. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. I got to bring. I've got James and Mel's stuff already packed as well. But now now I'll just give it to them like that. Yeah. So. But uh, thanks for everybody in the comments too. Thanks, Azza, for dropping in. You're an absolute gun. I love you, mate. Maddie, Christopher, Paco, George was here, Jeremiah, Brock, you know, everybody. A lot, yeah. of, the, a lot, of, the, a lot of the regs, the guys that you see around the traps, but appreciate it. And thank you to you two lovely ladies for having me over here on, uh, on Bookable. Yeah. Thanks, Dean. Have a good evening. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. See ya.